Hello, this is David with entry number 1098 or something. I wanted to uh, record this. I know in the previous one I said I would talk about the uh, little incident I had, and I will eventually get to that, but not today. Um, it's currently 6 six eighteen in the morning. Uh, here, which is pretty much bog standard for me. This is my uh, weekend, but my brain is uh, is broken, so I end up getting up around 4.45 every day, uh, seven days a week, and because of that, I have to go to bed like ridiculously early, or else uh, I guess I become a monster, and uh, I, no one wants that, so... Uh, basically, what I wanted to talk about today was this kind of thing that I just kind of felt right just now. I was watching a video on YouTube about uh, a, a woman chef, a, a Japanese uh, woman sushi chef, which normally, like in America, you wouldn't ever need to really qualify woman chef. But in Japan, a woman sushi chef is actually exceedingly rare and especially one that um, is successful. Um, and so it was just some video that a website produced, a really nice one. And what, I didn't really care about the woman sushi chef. What I care about is the, um, what I care about is the kind of like vocabulary that they use. Um, Cause every time I watch any of these kind of little Japan based clip shows about food or whatever I pay really close attention to the f to the vocabulary they use and I'll rewatch it a couple times just to try and memorize it and maybe you know like 30 or 25 to 30 percent of it actually sticks but um, when I was what I thought what I was thinking when I was doing this was was how grateful I am to be here and how this, it sounds kind of stupid, and I think a lot of people wouldn't understand, but I guess that's kind of a, not a great thing to say, but I don't, I feel like, personally, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't understand kind of the, the obsession or the kind of extreme passion, I guess, I have for this country. And it's not, I don't think I could ever properly, you know, say it or put it on paper. Um, it's just kind of this um, inherent thing that I, I feel. And, um, you know, I, I had a really... I, I mean, I had a pretty long conversation with one of my students yesterday who's very beginner and I'm sure only understood about 30% of what I said, but, um, you know, just about how this is kind of like a dream of mine and how, um, I, I know how this sounds and it just, I know it's not a great thing to say. I realize that, but I'm going to say it anyway. 95 to 99% of the other ESL teachers in Japan don't care about Japan. They think of Japan as like a Disneyland or a theme park, like a giant theme park that they can just kind of have some a year of fun in and then just be off with it and then say they taught in Japan like later on in their life. You know, and is there an inherent, is there an inherent, like, bad thing about that? No, there isn't. There isn't. But the difference between someone who just comes here for, like, a year of fun and someone who comes here for, like, me who, who really wants to be here and, like, live here is, 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 is inextricably different like the difference is is just vast bigger than vast you know like 
here's the thing here's the thing and i know i'm kind of rambling because i have like a lot of thoughts happening at the same time in my head um you you can love and appreciate this place like a theme park but you're not you're not ever going to really you're not ever going to really like appreciate it it's not a, that's not a good example it's kind of the difference i guess between like loving your parent and loving like jello <laughs> okay like you can really love jello but that love is like on orders of magnitude different than your parent you know what i mean like you can really love your jello and i mean like love it you can buy merchandise you can have like hats and like collect mugs and bowls and spoons jello paraphernalia but you're never going to love jello the same degree as your parent like like in a life or death situation like 10 times out of 10 you would always choose your parents over a bowl of jello you know what i mean and you could really really love it but it's never going to be the same and that's kind of, I guess, how I feel about Japan. It's like a parent to me. It's like that love, not parental love, but it's like that on that, on degrees of orders of, orders of magnitude difference, you know, like exponentially. And I know that's kind of, that might be hard for some people to, to understand. And it does sound like stupid and maybe foolish, but it's true. And when I think about like the quality of conversation and the quality of teaching that I provide to the students, my students, it's really, and I know how this sounds, I do know how this sounds, it's really unparalleled, unparalleled. And this, another point I wanted to bring up is language. In Japan or wherever, in the year and three months or whatever I've been here, I've learned a lot of of, um, of Japanese, but I still am not like super comfortable or even frankly able to have conversations with uh, like in, in Japanese. And the reason I have kind of chosen to do this is one, uh, okay, to be honest, one, I don't really... <sighs> I don't really like sitting down and like studying um, language because it's kind of it just feels like there's like other things I want to do more so priority number two and this is honestly like almost at the same level as number one in terms of like feeling for me is that when people learn another language especially when you're living like natively in the country of the language you want to learn you forget your native language or like there's a kind of trade-off between your native language and the language you're learning and I think that just has to happen naturally and so um, you know I'm here to teach English not to learn Japanese I know a lot of other people come here to like learn Japanese but it's not what I want to do so instead what I've elected to do and what I mentioned at the beginning of this video is that I've learned, I've decided to learn vocabulary and um, it's helpful because I can understand people but it, and on the other hand it's not like super useful because I can't really properly say anything back like when I do ask for things or talk to people I can ask for things easily and stuff like this but like if I have to have conversation it's basically like like a Spanglish or something where it's like 50% Japanese, 50% English because grammatically, like I still think in in English. So like, you know how in, in English sentences we use like the SVO uh, structure, but like in basically like, I don't know, like 60 or 70% of the other languages on earth, it's, it's opposite or some other pattern or some other order like OVS or V, no, OVS usually, um, and it's fine, but it works, but um, that's kind of the two big reasons why I've elected to kind of like not really hammer down and, and study it 
uh, the language like a lot. Now, I do feel like it's it would behoove me greatly to do this in the future, if, especially if I want to be here like long term. But um, as it stands now, I don't feel like there's any like real reason that I would have to do it uh, like today. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Um, it's just kind of this this feeling I have of um, like what's important to me and like what I really love about being here is just being here. I know that's kind of a nebulous thing to say, but um, that's how I feel. I just really appreciate kind of living and kind of experiencing Japan as a as a like resident. It's really nice. Thanks for watching and I'll talk with you soon.